The narrow channel effect is a little bit similar to the drain-induced barrier lowering effect. However, it is a little bit less dangerous and also slightly different. So, drain-induced barrier lowering is sometimes also called the short channel effect. Short channel effect is um, a, an umbrella term used and applied for a variety of, impact, of effects that appear when channel length is small. Drain-induced barrier lowering is one such effect, but it's so dominant and so important that it's sometimes used synonymously with, drain, with uh, short channel effect. But we've always been, we've uh, so far always been talking about um, short channels, i.e. channels where L is small. But what about narrow channels, where W is also small? Uh, first of all, is this a concern? Is it as much a concern as uh, the short channel transistor? So is the narrow channel transistor as much a concern as the short channel transistor? And the answer is typically no, because transistor width is usually kept a little bit higher than uh, than uh, transistor length. So at least for uh, digital circuits, most gates, most transistors and gates have um, very small channel length. Uh, but many transistors have a large width. In other words, many transistors have a large aspect ratio. Uh, this aspect ratio is necessary to keep the resistance small and to keep the delay uh, within um, reasonable bounds. But uh, so that's why you can actually uh, think of W as remaining higher than uh, the dangerous zone, far longer than length. But now with very deep scaling and even with high aspect ratios, W is also starting to become very small. So we are going to look at something called the narrow channel effect, which is similar to drain induced barrier lowering uh, in its impact, but a little bit different in where it comes from. So with drain-induced barrier lowering, we were concerned about the depth of the uh, drain in relation to the channel. And we said that the danger of this is that it forces us to use two-dimensional uh, field models when solving for the channel. But we went around this by just taking the effect of drain-induced barrier lowering separately and keeping our one-dimensional model uh, intact. Uh, if we had to keep the narrow channel effect with the short channel effect, if we had to take into consideration both of these effects simultaneously, we would have to use a three-dimensional field model. And when you get to three-dimensional models, uh, the only way to approach this is just to use numerical methods and trying to find an analytical model is not going to be very helpful. Uh, but, you know, that approach wouldn't give us insight and it wouldn't help us understand what the narrow channel effect is. So what we're going to do here is we're going to assume that the channel is narrow, but that it's not uh, too short so that we don't have to take both effects into consideration simultaneously. And so we'll take this into consideration and then that into consideration and then maybe add them up. Is this the ideal approach? Does it give us accurate results? Are the results even near accurate? No, but it gives us understanding and uh, intuition. So now we are dealing with a channel which is, um, which is very narrow. Uh, so W is small. Now, in general, when we have a, uh, a channel, and this is the gate, and we are dealing with a long, uh, a wide transistor, the gate will couple to the uh, substrate and will create a depletion zone. The problem is this depletion zone we always assume is has a, uh, a rectangular cross section. This was the problem with the uh, the drain induced barrier lowering because this uh, uh, rectangular cross section is wrong, and it is still the problem here because again this is wrong. The fact of the matter is there's still there's some fringe fields that create some depletion zone outside the area of the gate and so the depletion zone is going to look something like this so the gate is not only affecting the area of the oxide below it but also fringes on the sides now for a long for a wide channel transistor because notice that this is a side cross section that we have never considered before for the mosfet for a wide channel transistor um, these small fringe areas are not going to be, um, are not going to have that much of an impact in relation to this very large uh, rectangle. 
but in a, chan in a channel with a very small channel width, uh, these fringe areas are going to have an, an impact and we have to take them into consideration. So how are we going to account for this? We are going to create an analytical model that looks uh, more or less like the Yao model for uh, drain-induced barrier lowering using charge sharing. So again, we are going to create a charge sharing uh, factor, F. In this case, we call it F narrow. And F narrow is going to take into consideration the impact that these uh, fringe areas have on threshold voltage. And so F narrow in this case is going to be the ratio between the charge created by the gate and the charge in the channel. So the gate is creating charge in this whole white area. But the charge in the channel, the depletion charge in the channel, is just the charge in this rectangle. So the gate is making an effort to create depletion charge in the whole, um, in the whole white area. But only the charge in the rectangle is useful. So the gate is making more of an effort than it needs to because it needs to support these parasitic sort of fringe areas. So you can see that the narrow channel effect is actually going to increase the threshold voltage, not decrease it. So it has the opposite effect of drain-induced barrier lowering. So the charge sharing factor is uh, Q gate divided by Q channel. As with the charge sharing factor in drain-induced barrier lowering, you can forget about uh, the uh, height of the prism, you can forget about the concentration of charges, and you just have to divide the cross-sectional areas because uh, charge concentration and height is the same for both Q gate and Q channel. So Q in the gate is, um, is the area, is Q created by the gate is the area of the rectangle plus the area of the two quarter circles. So it's going to be X depletion max multiplied by uh, W, this is the area of the rectangle, plus two times a quarter of the area of one of the circles, which is pi times x depletion max square. And this is divided by Q in the channel, which is the useful depletion charge, which is the depletion charge in the rectangle alone, which is x depletion max multiplied by W. Now, doing a little bit uh, of simple algebra, this is going to be 1 plus uh, pi over 2 into x depletion max over w. So it is obviously a function of x depletion max as well as w. Now, how does this affect v threshold? This affects v threshold by multiplying the middle term. So again, v threshold consists of uh, 2 phi b, which is the uh, surface potential, which has no uh, relationship whatsoever to either the long channel, or the short channel, or the narrow channel effects. Same for flat band potential, which is constant and related to work functions. But then there's a third term, which is basically uh, Q oxide. This is 4Q and a epsilon phi B. This is the charge accumulated under the oxide, divided by C oxide. This was calculated um, with the assumption that the oxide only needs to support the charge in the rectangle. Now we know that it needs to support the total charge in the white area, and therefore we have to multiply this by F narrow. Now F narrow is obviously uh, greater than or equal to 1. So this is going to raise the, ch the, the threshold voltage rather than decrease it. So you can think of it as perhaps useful in terms of subthreshold conduction, uh, but not really, because if it raises the threshold voltage and you made your design based on a certain threshold voltage, then that's not good, because raising the threshold voltage above design point leads to a reduction in available on current, which increases delay. Now, F narrow is going to be high, is going to be uh, equal to 1 when W is much greater than X depletion max. And so the whole thing is about whether W and the depth of the depletion region are uh, comparable to each other or not, right? If W is much larger than X depletion max, which was the case in, uh, in old transistors, then this effect would not, uh, would not be observed. Now, the narrow channel effect is much less um, impactful and much less dangerous than uh, 
than the short channel effect or the drain induced barrier lowering. And it's also a little bit different because if you look at the expression of F, this is not actually related to any terminal potentials. This is not affected by drain potential or source potential or gate potential, right? This is just related to the geometry of the device as well as the maximum depth of the depletion region, which um, has to do with doping in the body, basically. So this is not related to operating conditions, which makes it a lot more tame than drain-induced barrier lowering, uh, which was made much worse with the application of drain potential. So that's why people don't actually talk about uh, narrow channel effect as much as drain-induced barrier lowering.